couple years ago, like um, on Christmas, my parents saw this head movement and they were like, what's that? Well, the first seizure I ever saw was Christmas morning. Gracie was sitting in our living room under our tree and she had her first seizure opening a present. Just a real simple shake. It's a staring and it's a head shake at first and they were really quick and infrequent and then they started getting a little longer. That was when it was getting um, scary that, you know, this is the, our reality now. Something's really wrong. The original diagnosis was some form of epilepsy, um, that she was having seizures. I think at the peak, I 40 a day is what she would have. I've seen her have seizures like almost everywhere I go. So I want to make sure that she's all right and that she's happy. And if she needs anything, she can always count on me. Do I fly? Say hello. Oh, you're not going to take your eyes off the camera, are you? <laughs> Whoosh. One day we noticed, like, her arm kind of had, like, a shake. You know, we had taken her to her pediatrician, who said that it was normal. And then we ended up being at her first Giants game, and we saw it again. She just had this seizure, 10 seconds. 15 second seizure, and I never saw it before, and it tripped me out. I know, when you're experiencing that and you see something like that, like you just know it's not normal. There's no way that's a normal bodily movement. Annabelle, Annabelle, Annabelle. I knew zero about epilepsy. We always think for the best, right, no matter what, but like, there's thoughts in your mind of, is our baby going to survive? <laughs> we started a cycle of meds that really began our cycle of hell, I think, for a good six months. She used to have, like, to take this pill, and it had big side effects, and, like, Every two days or something, she would always start, like, lose it and start bawling and stuff and say she's not good enough. The side effects of these medications were astronomical. Um, I, I can't begin to describe it. Painful to watch, knowing that you couldn't help her and that this, this isn't her. Epilepsy just means you've had more than one seizure. And a seizure is abnormal electrical activity in the brain that can cause your body to do something that you can't control. But a seizure can look like anything depending on where in the brain it comes from. They're just a little head movement with an arm movement too. Sometimes I feel it, sometimes I don't. She was on medications that looked like they should work based on her EEG pattern, but they weren't working for her. So it was very clear that she's one of those kiddos that falls into the category that we call drug resistant, where medications just don't work for them. The end game was surgery, and the end game was to... And we finally got the, the date for surgery a week before her surgery, that we went in, had the, all the brainiacs coming together and have a conference talking about Gracie today, and they need to do this genetic testing. We did genetic testing to make sure we weren't missing something that was causing her to have both things wrong with her, an abnormality in the brain and these what looked like generalized seizures. I think the first thing to understand is that anybody could have a seizure. And when you look at the entire population, about 10% will have a seizure at some point in their life. And each person's individual threshold to have a seizure is impacted by their genetics. And we're just now beginning to understand those genetic variables. So we work very closely with Dr. Saida and the Center for Personalized Medicine in coming up with our genetic diagnoses when our patients get blood work done. Genetic testing for epilepsy is rapidly becoming the standard of care. Usually Dr. Holder will communicate directly with us and let us know that there's a sample coming. In the meantime, the sample is being processed and sequenced. 
and then once I've extracted the information that Dr. Holders provided, I provide that to Dr. Rasa. Genetics is a game changer. We were able to diagnose a glucose transporter defect, which is a problem where the sugar can't get from the blood to the brain, and the brain, in a sense, is starving for energy. We decided to hold off on surgery, even though there is still this abnormality in the brain, and someday that abnormality may make seizures that we may need to treat surgically, but we thought we needed to try the diet first because we knew she had this disorder of glucose transportation. The idea was, let's try this diet this uh, Atkins, modified Atkins diet, and see if we can minimize the seizures by adjusting what she eats. We were about to perform brain surgery on your daughter. We're no longer going to do that. So this is good. And since she's been on the diet, she's improved drastically. Sure enough, immediately we have seen a decrease in the seizures. More importantly, she's overcome the meds that she's still on, and her personality is back to the girl we knew two years ago. She's uh, wonderful, and, and I see that person shining through. The, the lightness is overcoming the darkness now. Her personality is just vibrant. This is where I get <laughs> It's She's back, my I little know, girl. She comes and hugs me and, lo and says, yeah, Mama, I yeah. love you, and that was gone for a long time. stop seizures in a child, you change their whole life. You give them the opportunity to go to school, to learn, to grow, to get a job, to get married, to have a family. You've really made a difference in everything they're going to do in the future. I couldn't have gotten through it without my family and friends. They're always there for me. Okay. Uh -oh. Oh. Ooh. Whoa. Ooh. Whoa. Oh. Wow. There's mom and dad. Dr. Adam <laughs> Nunes is one of our most recent graduates from the pediatric epilepsy program. Uh, he took a job at UCSF and is continuing that mission up north. We're very proud of that achievement. I first met Annabelle uh, when she was six months old. Uh, she was referred to us for evaluation of these funny movements that she was having. Um, fortunately, she was able to get referred directly from her pediatrician to our office. And it was at that time after we heard the description of the movements and saw a video of them that we became concerned for infantile spasms. Immediately when she when she took the medicine, that night the, that night the seizures stopped. Yeah, she'd been having them every single day. She was having them every. And that day. night she took it, and then she didn't have any. Again. I love you. We're happy about where she's at. She she laughs all day long. Karen Cure helped me train as a pediatric epileptologist. I was able to bring the skills that I learned at UCLA to UCSF to help build our infantile spasm program here. So Karen Cure has been supporting our epilepsy fellowship, which allows us to train the future generation of doctors to take over and help fill this gap. It's enabled us to grow the epilepsy program and start the epilepsy genetic program, which then enabled us to do all the testing that we do on our patients. I think there's a huge benefit to having multiple physicians who specialize in epilepsy who are delivering care and conducting research, that exchange of ideas is essential. It's critically important to um, have uh, the ability to do both good clinical care and good research. Entities like the EFGLA that are supporting both are invaluable because even though everybody knows we have some federal funding, it doesn't do enough. The commitment of Care and Cure has been steady that they have successfully trained, you know, allowed us to train more physicians, and that those folks are doing great things both locally and nationally. Uh, and my hope is that this effort uh, keeps building and that our influence can be a model for other epilepsy foundations elsewhere in the country, internationally. I think we can do it.